everybody. Welcome to what's in the cards. Uh, nice to see all you here. Um, new faces. Uh, some new faces from last week. Uh, as you are probably aware, I'm doing a two-week special, and this is the conclusion. This is the second week. Our first week was last Wednesday. If any of you missed it or missed part of last week's show and need to catch up, do so in the archives. You can find the link on uh, the Facebook pages for Terror by Misha. It's in the cards. And Holly Craig's page as well has it. Um, as you are aware by now, uh, Donald Michael Craig passed away uh, back on March 17th. Uh, from pancreatic cancer. We were discussing Holly and his relationship, how they met, um, some private moments that they've had. Uh, Holly was nice enough to give us a peek into the, her life together with Don and uh, all the events leading up to his passing, including finding out the diagnosis and Holly actually having to be the one to break the news to him um, and what they went through and right up to the passing. So tonight we're going to wrap things up, touch on some of the areas that we touched on last week that may have gotten cut off a little bit. And I'm going to also give you the opportunity this evening to call in yourselves and personally speak directly to Holly, even if you just want to give her your condolences, say hello, you will be able to do so. I'm going to go over the three little, the, the, the rules that we have for calling in now. And right before we open up the phone lines, I will do it again for those joining in a little late. I will need you to be away from the computer or just turn the volume down. Otherwise, we're just going to get the feedback. We also do not have hold capabilities. So as we are on the line with someone speaking to them, I need to ask you to please wait until that call is finished before calling in and trying to get through next uh, because we can't put you, put you on hold. The number will get put up and announced. Uh, we're gonna try to do that up to give enough people opportunity to phone in about quarter after nine or so. Um, and I do have to ask you to keep it short. I'm gonna be like monitoring the time a little bit, especially if we notice that a whole lot of people are wanting to call in. Uh, so we can get as many of you through as we can tonight. With that, for those that may have missed the show completely last week and are not familiar with who Holly is or the name Donald Michael Craig and the wonderful person that he was, um, he was a, a treasure. He was um, what you saw out in public and on interviews and things is who he was. He did not put on airs. Um, he was a wonderful, caring human being, missed by a whole lot of people. He had graduated from UCLA with a degree in philosophy, and he studied public speaking and music at the university level. And after a decade of personal study and practice, he started 10 years of teaching courses in Southern California on the Kabbalah, Tarot, Magic, Tantra, and Psychic Development. And he's the author of many books and publications. And we had a little teaser last week. Uh, Holly informed us that there's some unpublished things that um, laying around in his office that she's working on making sure that they do get released. So we'll have that to look forward to. And Holly Allender Craig was married to Donald for two years. They were together, I believe 14 or so. 10, 10, for 10 years. 10 years, yeah, 10 years. okay. 
Um, she's a lecturer, a cultist, a yoga instructor, certified massage therapist, practitioner, psychic and Reiki practitioner, and she's going to be publishing a whole bunch of books as well. And she'll uh, we'll be seeing about scheduling her as her releases and things are due so that you can get you know, sneak peeks maybe before it, the stuff gets released and get a better update as to how things are going. With that, because I know we're going to have another, you know, show where the time's just going to whiz by and a whole lot of you is going to phone in. I want to welcome Holly. Hi. Hi, Ivy Show. Thank you for having me again. I'm really, really glad to be here. I, I'm so thrilled we were able to arrange it with everything you have going on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's play catch up just a little bit. We don't want to, you know, rehash everything from, from the last show. Um, but Dunn had been diagnosed. When he was diagnosed, he was already at stage four, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah, it had metastasized already to the liver, so we were fighting a really big uphill battle. And you were the one that ended up breaking the news to him. Both Absolutely. Like the doctors would sit both of these down to inform you. Well, one of the doc the doctor that was his oncologist said to me that she's seen it in, in her many years in in the biz that people who heard it from their loved ones actually lived longer than the ones who heard it from their doctors. And Don did live two weeks longer than what they had given as a prognosis. Right, right. And you had a lot of people sending out healing and yes. spiritual work and Reiki being sent and all kinds of things going on. Absolutely, the world was trying to heal Don and it was we were both so humbled, so inspired. It brought us to tears many times. And for those of you who know Don, he didn't cry very often. So it was it was a rare moment. Yeah. And um, we'll jump ahead to um, March 17th when he passed. We didn't really touch too much on that day because we were touching on uh, so many other things. He was at home, I believe you had said. Yes, like yeah, yeah. We were able to do hospice at home, and my amazing stepmother, Deb, came out and stayed with me for a month. Uh, she's also a home health care worker and has, you know, worked in these situations before. So that that alone was invaluable. But just just to have someone here with me was amazing. Um, so he's with us for a month. Uh, Time deteriorated, uh, you know, medications were increased because he was in pain. He was, you know, severely stressed out. Um, and March 17th, I had run out to get uh, dinner for Deb and I because it was her anniversary with my father. It was their wedding anniversary. And uh, ran out, got dinner. Don's breathing had slowed a bit. Get back, we have dinner. His breathing slowing a bit more. Um, couldn't get really a good pulse on him. So we know something's happening, but we're not quite sure what. And um, I, I can't just sit still anymore. I can't, I, can't, I can't drink anymore. I can't do anything else. I'm like, I gotta do something. So we do the natural thing that most Hoosiers do. We play cards. So Deb caught, taught me a new card game. And as I was catching on to it, um, I, I, I burst out laughing because I think I won a hand and uh, that's when Don took his last breath, because he heard me laughing. And uh, ran over, put my hand on his chest, and within moments, he just slipped away in his sleep. It was, it was really beautiful. That sudden, just like yeah. that, and peaceful. Very, very peaceful. He didn't suffer at all, did not suffer at all. Now, the next beautiful thing that happened after that was the flurry of phone calls that always happen but one of the most important phone calls went out to um, a group called the Rainbow Warriors. They were a group that I had studied with. And they came out to the house and did a rite of passage for Don. They, um, they, they wrote the ceremony specifically for him. And they came out in robes 
with all the with all the equipment and everything, got everything set up, and um, thankfully they wrote it down and gave it to me because I don't remember half of it other than the fact that it was one of the most beautiful things I had heard. Blessing the body, blessing the soul, the spirit, um, blessing every part of his body. Um, they also included mala beads, which is the um, uh, meditation beads that tantrics use. Uh, very important symbolism for Don and I. Uh, and so they incorporated all of that in there with chanting. And oh, it was just, it was just a purely magical moment on, on the highest level that there could possibly be. Yeah, and lots of tears. Sure, shed. he was proud. <laughs> yes, yeah, there. yeah. He was, I think, very wowed by yeah. by the eloquence, by the thoughtfulness, and the love that was there. It was, uh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. And for the viewers out there, because not everyone is pagan, uh, right. so for a simplified explanation of this, would you compare it to? The last rites being given. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was a very unique perspective. I think every tradition has its own, and the Rainbow Warriors definitely gave it the spin that had essence of themselves, which is kind of a Wiccan shamanic background, versus it, and bringing in Don and I's background, which is more of the tantric, ancient Indian uh, uh, religion and philosophies. So it was a beautiful melding of, of all of that together. Uh, I want to, um, I don't know how, you know, what exactly we can touch on, and I don't want to take up, you know, a whole lot of time, but we do have someone in the chat room mm -hmm. that, that um, they have a lesion on their pancreas, and they're getting an MRI on the 20th. Great. Um, Great. So I don't know if you have anything that you want to throw out there for that kind of situation a lesion could just be a lesion so just start with that let the worry i know worry's going to be there because it's the worry of the unknown totally get it totally understand it my worry was much more condensed than than waiting you know six more days until you get the mri um and then it may be a little bit more time after that before the results are given so the best thing i can say is in the meantime Take it easy on yourself. Know that you're going to be stressed. Know that this is going to be emotional. And be honest with yourself and be honest with others. Because the more honest I was and Don was in all of that, the better care we got, the better instructions we got, the better explanations we got. And it really helped us. We spoke a little bit about that. Um, last week we had touched on... Did John go through any rages, being annoyed, aggravated, and one of the oh, biggest things that you had mentioned that brought that out in him was not getting straight answers with the doctors, or they want to show off their degree, and right. they all, we always run into that, and you're sitting there like, yeah, okay, what language is that? You know, bring it down to nursery school level. <laughs> right. Well, there's even times that as the medication... Um, cause he was on a happy dose of morphine and an anti-anxiety anti drug. So as those doses unfortunately needed to be increased, he was less and less his regular self. And there was one morning, my chair was right next to his bed. So I could just reach a hand out to him. Um, you know, just touch him, just say, Hey, it's all good. But this one morning he wanted to get out of bed to use the bathroom and that was no longer an option. He could no longer walk and we had special pants. And those of you who've been in a situation know that you don't call them diapers, you call them pants or something else. A uh, bit more dignity. And he, he, just, he just would not listen. And I very firmly put my hand on his arm and I said, no, Don, you're gonna stay in bed. He looked at me and you could totally see the insult coming. And this is the first time in, his entire, in our entire relationship they ever he called me the B word. He never called me a biatch. And uh, I looked at him and I said, F you, Donald Michael Craig, this is what it is. This is how it's gonna be. And I love you, deal with it. And that was it. And I turned around and I burst into tears and I just kept on going. So you do that show, you know, you're gonna have moments. Exactly, especially when mood altering drugs are added and pain 
con start consuming the person and breaking down their layers of resistance. It just, you've got to, the, the, the caretakers need to be the ones that understand that and are very respectful of it and are very patient, very patient. That's, that's the big key there. Yes. Understand, with, with anything. With exactly. any illness that people are going through um, and watching their loved ones go through. The one that's in the chat room um, going for the MRI, which is next Tuesday, the 20th, um, they're already doing visualizations. Excellent. Using not to worry. Good. Okay. More times with friends. Uh, and they're saying thank you. And they've put a special journal and pen for thank you. Well, good luck. I hope it is something just very simple that, that can be very easily taken care of. Yes. It, it's the waiting and the wonder. Yeah, it is. Because the mind just goes all over the place. With that Absolutely. Language. And where the mind goes, the emotions follow. Yep. Well, we're going to end up running out of time because I said about quarter after we'd open up the phone line. So we're okay. going to do that uh, before we get bombarded with that what's going on with you now now that everything is done um you know people think you know loved one passes especially one that was ill maybe one that that suffered for a long period of time um you know way longer than than don did that you have a little bit of guilty relief that you know they're no longer suffering and and yeah. you can be more relaxed and do things but there's a whole lot of things that follow the death of someone that needs to right. be done that you don't even think about until you're right. in the midst of it right so in between uh quitting my full-time job because uh no longer seemed to be appropriate somehow doing marketing work for a corporation that was only concerned about growing X percentage amount of profit each year, suddenly didn't really make a lot of sense to me. So quit my job, um, immediately went into looking to what we could do for Don's um, book that he's got. Immediately then uh, started working on my own books, uh, just self-published one of them up on Amazon on yoga and started working on getting freelance jobs together. And I started dating and I, I, I smile, I chuckle whenever I think of all these things that, that you've done because you find that, and we touched a little bit on it last week, that people go through the loss of a loved one, a spouse, a live-in, whatever, um, even a child or a parent, whatever the case may be, people want to keep a routine. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And I destroyed, I destroyed every routine I ever had. I now work at home. Uh, I now, uh, you know, working on with a company that is a distributed, uh, I think it's the word, where everybody works from home. So working through, you know, working on getting some gigs with that, working on some other local businesses to go in just for a few hours a week and do some writing for them. Uh, yeah, just totally, ripped, just totally tore it apart. I'm actually going to go to two festivals this year, Michigan Pagan Fest, and then in uh, November, going back to the Florida Pagan Festival, and I'm I'm headlining in both of those, teaching, um, teaching yoga, psychic development, that kind of stuff, and uh, Don's life lessons that you should have learned but you don't remember. So I'm here to remind you. Class. <laughs> Very good. What do you find? We might as well open up the phone lines in between the questions. Sure. Um, so for those tuning in. Uh, late that was not here maybe immediately at the beginning of the show and you're going to call in I need you to either turn the show off move away turn the volume down otherwise we're just going to get the feedback from the show playing and we're not going to be able to hear you uh, so we do not have hold capabilities so as we are on with a caller I need you to wait until that call has ended to dial in to get through and with that said I'm going to give out the telephone number 
which is 615-692-1262. So you can feel free and call in for the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Um, and then we'll have to shut off the phone line and not allow any more callers so we can close up the show. Um, yeah, that, that always, I, I chuckle and let, because you just, every possible thing there is, I think, to change about one's life, you did. Do you regret that now that you quit your job and you're at home and, you know, time is, no matter how many years we have, with somebody times short it speeds by for you regret now that you didn't do it then and have yeah. short time at home with him i do um it was but it was a different mindset uh before don got sick uh i thought that was kind of a reality that this was how work was supposed to be that this is what this is what I was supposed to face. And, you know, I had been looking, I had been talking to other companies, but I kept looking kind of at the same model that I would go work at a corporation instead of risking a lot and jumping off and doing my own business. Uh, what happened after I quit was quite amazing. People heard that I had, you know, left uh, my full-time position and they stepped up. And I, you know, have got a lot of opportunities ahead of me and I know more is going to come down the, the pipeline because the universe provides. So, yeah, I kind of I kind of do regret the fact that I didn't have that mindset beforehand. And uh, how do you deal with that for those we all go through regrets, whether it's because somebody passed or they moved the wet water the divorce. Right. We right. sit there and we go, well, what did I do that I shouldn't have? Or what could I have done that I did? And that gets us. Right. Okay. And what could I have done? That's a great question to ask because that, that kind of gives you an idea of what you could do for the future. But I had a lot of people say to me, some good close friends say to me, you couldn't have known that he was going to get sick. You couldn't have known that this path was going to happen. And what you were doing at that moment with what you knew of the world, what you understood of your reality, uh, what you did was right. I so it is 2020. I it is 2020. To people. But you got to be forgiving of yourself as well because you're doing the best with what you've got at the moment in time. And, you know, circumstances changed for me so dramatically that it gave me a different view of reality. Life's too short. You know, I had enough of a savings, thankfully, because of Don, because of a nice life insurance, um, that it was going to afford me the time to take off for about a year and dig in hard what I wanted to do. So I had a padding. I had the cushion that I needed to start my job. Right. Now, one thing I want to backtrack just like a couple minutes prior, because interesting, I, I find very ironic that when you were saying you felt you had, you know, that was how you worked, you had to go out and work, and this yes. is what you had to do, but yet Don worked from home. Yeah, because his company was, was that. right, his company was out of, um, Minnesota and he had two positions in the company that allowed him to work remotely and occasionally they would fly him in uh, for meetings and things like that or they would meet up at conferences like PantheaCon or other places um, but it was, it was the very nature of his job that he was able to work from home thankfully because he was kind of a quiet guy so uh, he worked really well on his own at the house. Uh, he would always say that the that the commute was the worst when the dog got in the way of the door to his office. Uh, but yeah, it was just the nature of his job. He was fortunate, in my mind, he was fortunate to be able to work from home. Yeah, anybody that can is is fortunate. <laughs> well, some of us, yeah, some of us think that, but I know people who thrive on going into the office. They just they thrive on that energy, and that's what they need. And you know, more power to you. You know what you want. I know that I've done that for over twenty years, and. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. That's enough. Love y'all. I'm going to go work in my house. <laughs> <laughs> what do you find? You know, everything's done and over with. What did you find to be the most shocking afterwards? Was it the amount of cleanup with, with bills? Was it how people reacted because maybe some didn't know how what to say to you or did some people leave? what was the most shocking to you in all this the bills were a little overwhelming and that is something just as other people already know and saw me post earlier on facebook today um the business of death as i call it takes months to sort out and i picked up a, a book resource if anybody wants it i'll post it another time i, I don't remember the name of the book um that gave me a step-by-step -step guide of what to do, when to ask for help, gave me sites to work through. So it gives me an idea of how to deal with bills, how to deal with managing a trust and all that stuff. Um, so that, yes, it stresses me out. Um, and I do talk about it a lot so that I can work through it, get other people's opinions. So that's how I manage the business of death. Um, there were just, I guess the shocking part was how much I didn't want to be around people for a while. Uh, how much space I needed, even from close loved ones, family members. It's just, I needed to cut it all off. I needed the energy gone. I needed, I needed me alone to figure out who I was because I knew I wasn't the same. Um, so yeah, that would probably be the biggest. And just stupid emotional um, disagreements with family members, which of course heal over time. Uh, that happened. I don't think I'm unique in that respect. Uh, the biggest thing, though, was kind of reintroducing myself to my family because I'm not the same person I was before Don died and getting them up to speed on what I'm doing and how quickly it's going because, uh, as my sister said, this is a uh, transformation on steroids, Holly style, and, you know, I'm just blowing through so many different social norms and throwing them off to the wayside that it... It can be unsettling to those around me. And so I, I say welcome to the whirlwind of my life. I'm very blunt, very bold about it. <laughs> hey, that, that's what's so wonderful about you. A lot of people, you know, hide things, only allow what the norm is to be thought and put out there. And one of your other outrageous in a lot of people's eye changes that, that you did um making a point in the chat room wasn't that done style also yeah yeah and that was that was a beautiful part of our relationship is i kind of feel like the two of us operated outside of the social reality um okay. he always said think for yourself question authority and whether that authority is you know your loved one sitting next to you that's you know you're married to or even yourself so yes Yes, they're absolutely right. We definitely did question why we're doing what we're doing when we're doing it. And we have to touch on this one because, you know, we can't just let it go in passing because I know I heard some <gasps> out there. <laughs> What's that? Having an, a boyfriend so soon. And oh, I know. Relationships, I bet that is the biggest. Oh, my God. What is the matter with her? She is. Yeah, no. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. I'm a slut, right? People possibly think I'm a slut, but that wasn't what was coming to my mind. What <laughs> but she must really be losing it. A lot of people <laughs> probably heard say, you know, you're just avoiding the grief in the morning period, and you know, like I, when there's a breakup, you hear a rebound. They're on a rebound. They didn't have enough time yet to okay. take poop from the other person. And, you know, how how is this working? Is there an issue with the new man in your life because it is so freshly close to yes. not passing where, you know, maybe they get a little uncomfortable and... Because you need you, you do need your time. There's going to be the first that they say is the hardest with the passing of a loved one. Your first year, 
the first every holiday, first anniversary without the person. Mm-hmm. How is all that working? Well, considering all those other dates are in the future, I will deal with that as time gets closer and I'll see how I feel at that point. But I, what I'm hearing a lot in, in what you're saying and possibly reflect, reflecting from others is, again, it's that word should. Good. The first year should be in this sort of this this sort of set diagram of how things should happen. Um, yeah, will it be hard come Samhain when it's our wedding anniversary and it's also the day that my dog died? Yeah, it'll probably be difficult. Will I get through it? Yeah, probably. Um, I, I don't know. It's just how do you know when you're supposed to be done grieving? And this has been this has been a big thing um, for a lot of people. I think is that we should be grieving longer, but. I had this, I met this amazing man. I met him a couple of years ago at, at, at uh, the Florida Pagan Gathering and reacquainted with him this time around and it just clicked. Things were just in alignment. It, it made sense and I felt, and this may be blessedness, but I felt Don blessing this. Um, and the reaction that I got. As it was pointed out in the chat room, Don, your happiness has, was always his concern. Yes, yes, the person must know Don well, yes. <laughs> yeah. He made you happy. Yes, he did. He always he always worked really hard to make me happy and make sure that, that I was a success and that I didn't hide in his shadow. Um, but yes, definitely my happiness was number one. And I know without a doubt that he's happy. Yeah. And he's extremely happy this week. Because yes. I'm sitting here laughing for those of you that saw this tuned in last week or saw the archive, but those that didn't, there's a lot of in and out, and you know, it, it was a Skype issue, but then we realized it wasn't because as the show was winding down and we were touching the full circle back to right. Holly. Everything started working properly, and you had pointed out he never really liked to be talked about. He didn't like the attention, photo taken, and right. the whole time you were being cut off was naturally about Don. Because you right. know about everything leading up and what he was going through, how he dealt with it, how you helped him, how you helped yourself. But then when we got to the point of he passed, what are you, Holly? And we just bring up to work beautiful like it is now. So, yes, he's right. quite happy this evening. Yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's he's hanging out. He's like, this is just, this is this is Holly's time, you know. So it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Because broadcast is He's letting us broadcast tonight. Right, right. Thank you, Don. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thanks, Don. Don't need to have that. That you guys didn't know this, but when we went, when one of the last times that we uh, got cut off last week, I actually yelled at him. I don't typically yell at him, but I actually yelled at him last time, and that's when things started going better. <laughs> yes, you did tell me that after after the show. That was funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, the phone lines open. Uh, you'll only you're only gonna have about 15 minutes now at this point to call in. I know you all want to hear what Holly has to say and things like that, and you don't like calling in necessarily and disrupting the flow of the conversation. But that's why it's open tonight, and we saved it for this week. And we didn't open the lines last week. The number six one five six nine two one two six two. Um, what? about the books so we're working on um right now we're working on a book uh that don had been working on for years uh it's a tantric book um many people know that he started out in um well he studied many traditions let's just put it that way he studied many traditions um and a lot of them i don't know because of the nature of his past, uh, and, and as many people know, in organizations sometimes you can't talk about the groups that you've been in, so I don't know some of the groups, which is fine. But he also was in ceremonial magic, um, which led him, let's put it this way, the study of the Kabbalah and understanding 
where it came from. Because the Kabbalah, in a sense, has only been around for a few thousand years. What came before it? And that was always his search for what came before it. And he slowly but surely stumbled upon and researched, I guess stumble's not the good word, but he, he ended up circling back to the days of the Harappans over 10,000 years ago on the Saraswati River in India. And this book is a tribute to everything that he learned about the system of Tantra. And uh, as we get into it, you know, we'll, we'll, there'll be more beautiful marketing details on it. But basically, it'll be a, it's about rituals. It's about how to exercise, yoga, how to meditate, um, how to eat, Ayurvedic, uh, how, to, how to think, how to just, it's an entire system of beliefs and philosophy and ritual and spiritual work. Matter of fact, the wedding ceremony that Don and I did, uh, he wrote, which is based on a tantric wedding ceremony. Uh, so full Indian garb, the whole deal. It was, uh, it was, it was beautiful. Um, and he also wrote his own funeral ceremony that I'll be presiding over. Uh, details to come on that. And uh, so he already wrote it. So we're going to do a tantric funeral ceremony for him uh, and memorial service for him in a, in a few months. Was he cremated or buried? Yes. Actually, his ashes are right behind me oh. <laughs> on the shelf. They're right behind me. Um, yes, he was cremated. That was his wish. Um, another wish was that uh, he asked me to figure out what clothing to send him off in. And I sent him off in his wedding clothes with his wedding wreath which was a uh, the wedding clothes was the full Indian outfit with the turban the whole deal um it was uh yeah it was tearful and actually hilarious trying to dress him so um that but that went well so yes so he was behind me hanging out in my office giving me lots of good advice and leave them to Skype alone <laughs> Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oddly enough, we're good. We're good this week. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, good. Yeah. I don't want to keep saying it and push hard luck, though, because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's around exactly. like, yeah, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch this. <laughs> right. But eventually, I'm going to turn what he's currently in. Um, I'm going to take his books. I'm going to glue a bunch of his books together, hollow out the center, and I'm going to put his ashes inside glue it up. And then once the tantric book is done, put that on the on one of the ends. So his urn will eventually be his life's works, uh, or at least a good portion of them. That is very neat. Yeah, some of his ashes that were going to go with me to the honeymoon that we never got to take, or I should say that we chose not to take because we were trying to save money for it. So we're, I'm going to go to India, and I'm going to take some of his ashes with me um, and spread them there for him because he never got to go. That will be emotional. Yeah, I think out of, I think you're right, Misha, out of everything that we're talking about, anniversaries and everything, the trip to India is really going to, it, it can be really, it's going to be really hard. Uh, just because it's something that he and I shared for so many years, uh, wanting to go to and uh, do together. And we made so many plans. Whew. We made so many plans of what we're going to do when we got there. So I'm going to do my best. Um, I've got friends across India that are uh gracious enough to say, hey, come hang out with us. So um, once I figure all that out, you know, I'm going to hit the ground running. You go, girl. <laughs> that seems to be like a statement. It's like my, my, my new cry. You go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and you, I believe this was um, after he passed, you got a tattoo. <laughs> Elephant tattoo. Yeah, just a little one. Just a little one, and it's and it's not done yet. Sorry. Yeah, it's a Ganesh. Uh, I can't really see it too well, but it's Ganesh. Um, I work. Ganesh is my main deity that I work with. I uh, uh, he is the elephant god and an Indian elephant god, a remover of obstacles. But he's also the patron god for writers. Um, so even before Don got sick, I was very close with Ganesh, and as he was getting sick. And everything we went through, my relationship with Ganesh got stronger and stronger and stronger. And uh, I just, I knew I needed to get a tattoo. I knew for a couple of years Ganesh was going to be on my body somewhere. And it just kind of came together. We're not done yet. We still, I still got some more work to do on it, though. So it's a pretty bold, yeah, it's a pretty bold statement to put a God on your right arm, which is my sending arm, which means I have more of an oomph to it. 
It feels like. I'm forget to get a tattoo. Me and needles just. <laughs> well, I have five. I have five I of them. I remember so. being down the shore, walking, we walked past the tattoo parlor, and it was, you know, the shore for vacationers. So they do it right there where you go. And I loved yep. it. And my mother was with me, and she took one look at me. She's like, um, you know, putting her arm on my back because I was like ready to faint. <laughs> just that quick glimpse in there. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> I had to go sit down and yeah. <laughs> right, right. No, it is, yeah. It's definitely a good commitment and uh, definitely think about it for a really long time be before you do it. And if you need a good artist in LA, call me. I got the best. <laughs> How painful are they? Well, there's needles in your arms, Misha. Of course it hurts. <laughs> it, all it all depends on when you get it done. There are some parts, uh, on the arm where I got it that was more sensitive there than others. And there are times I felt like, really, do you need to dig? Really? <laughs> and there's just times you just don't look and there's just times you breathe and embrace it. And uh, I've heard people get all sorts of, uh, yeah, that's a whole nother discussion. Yeah. But yeah, there's all sorts of funness that goes along with getting a tattoo. <laughs> there is, there is. Um, the comments are everybody's glad you're doing it and they're loving the or an idea of what you're doing with that now did you come up with that or was it something the two of you discussed the, you mean the tantric book the, no no the urn oh the urn no that that's just that's just holly being holly that's just me being crafty um don wasn't defined by his life works but no but. he was so close to them and they were so close to him that I couldn't, and I, I literally did, like make, like many of you they probably have done this too, you just go out at the, when the time's right and you look at all these urns. I looked at hundreds of urns and nothing made sense. And my sister had gifted me um, book boxes that she had made. And I'm like, well, I could probably do this on a massive scale. So we'll see what happens. It could be a disaster of paper flying everywhere. So... But I got, extra, I got extra copies, and I can always go to the bookstore and buy more. So, and that royalty is yeah. coming back to me. So it's all good. Uh, I, I was going to say, you better have more than one copy. <laughs> I do. I do. Trust me. There are a lot of books in this house. I have three rooms that are libraries. And you can see I've got two shelves behind me, and that's just a couple of, yeah. So we have lots of books in this house. I have lots of copies of this stuff. I have the Donald Michael Craig Library. It's impressive. What do you think is going to happen to his books? Do you think since he passed the publishing companies if, after however they determine when they put a stop to publishing a book, they'll do that and you won't be able to get your hands on them anymore? Or Oh, no. There's, there's out clauses. No, no, no. See, what typically happens, and I've been in publishing for over 15 years so what typically happens with books like this um if the sales continue and the interest continues they'll continue to publish it because it's it's within their own rights to do it but it's also their own business that that they can do it uh, modern magic is still one of the number one occult books selling around the world so that's not going to go away anytime soon um if things go out of print in other words they stop publishing it then there is a set time frame within those contracts of when those rights are reverted back to me and then I can choose what to do with it based on the contractual obligations. So it's not like the works are ever going to be gone. They may just transform years down the road to something else. But I don't see Llewellyn doing it. They not only did Don write books for them, but he worked for them as an acquisition editor and a marketing editor. Right. He was really ingrained in their family. So I just can't see it going away anytime soon. So exciting. We're going to be running out of time. Why do you want that? <laughs> because um, for those that caught last, last week's show, uh, we're going to have to, you know, go off a little bit earlier because for those that caught last, the beginning of last week's show, we did a tribute. We are right, going right. to end since this is the last night of the series that we were doing. We're going to go off the air 
with the same tribute, so we need a little extra time there for that. And since I'm discussing this right now instead of at the end, I want you to know um, next week I won't be here live, so one of the past uh, sh rerun shows will be on that you can catch. I have my yearly week-long um, fundraiser that I do around here for the community, mm -hmm. um, and it starts next Tuesday and goes through till Memorial Day. Uh, so you'll be able to find details out on that on Facebook. Um, what do you want to end with? Any thoughts, any memories, any uh, suggestions to people, any advice yeah. to people that you want to give? Well, I really want to say to um, the community at large that the support that they've shown for me, my family, and my friends has been amazing. I couldn't have asked, I could have asked for more. And I was, I've been, the, the word that I've used the most is that I'm just humbled. I'm very humbled by all of it. I'm very inspired and touched by all the love and, and support. But I also want to make sure that their voices are heard where his, where, where their feelings are for him. So when we do the memorial service here in Los Angeles, I believe the tentative date is September 20th, and like I said, more details to come. One of the parts of the ritual is I'm asking people to send me their thoughts about Don. And in the ceremony, we will put those into the fire and send those up to him. Now, we're gonna be doing the same ceremony because we're kind of doing an East Coast, West Coast thing. Um, so for the, West, uh, the East Coast folks uh, at the Florida Pagan Gathering in Samhain, we're talking about doing the same, same ceremony there. Again, details to follow on that as we work that out. So if people have uh, memories that they'd like to share with me or they just say straight up, please don't read, just put in the fire, I will do that happily. Very, very nice. And, and, and to do it on both coasts. Yeah, it, yes. it's, it somehow turned out that way. And I think that's a Donald Michael Craig thing again. See, just walking into things. <laughs> exactly. It, opportunity sets it up. We're still, like I said, we're still working out all the details for everything, but that's tentatively the idea that we've got right now. And you'll be posting it on Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. And, I will post it on my page and on Don's page. Okay. All right. Um, let's, let's wrap up quick. Okay. With the burning questions that still sit, you know, is a problem for a lot of people. We addressed it last week. The, what do you say to somebody? What do you say to the person that comes to you and says, I'm dying, I only have X amount of time to live. What do you say to the widow or widower? Or the parent or child that lost their loved one besides, I'm sorry, I'm sorry it seems so okay. Like you said, you didn't cause the death. You didn't right. cause the illness. Right. Um, let's address that because that is uncomfortable moments for a lot of people. Right. I've, I've thought about this and I've had a lot of off, offline discussions too about this. So my answer this week is a little bit more direct. It would be, I love you, wrap my arms around the person and just listen. Meet them where they're at, listen to what they have to say, get more information on what's going on. Um, consoling in the sense of acknowledging this sucks. What they're going through is hard, it's horrible, and I can't imagine what Don went through. I can't even begin to imagine what he went through. So I wasn't about to say, I understand. But what I did say was, this sucks. I acknowledged it, and so it's love, hug, and acknowledge. Those are, the, those are the things that I have found in my journey that have made all the difference when working with other people, either in similar situations or working with me or being with me. Right. Now, what would you say, now onto that, you know, be there for the person. Yeah. You said you, for you, your own self, you needed to just be alone. What yeah. do you do, how do you determine though as a friend or a close relative that the person isn't you know ready for a big depression episode 
for it is a healing time that they need. When do you know to try to, come on, let's go out. You don't want to be in the room and start being persistent with pick up the phone when I call you. Yeah, you would know your friends the best. So this is this is typically what happened with friends interacting with me and family members. They would uh, leave me either texts or voicemail or emails or Facebook messages, and they would be, hey, when you're ready, get in touch with me. And some people were a little bit more persistent than, than others, but when the time felt right, I did pick up the phone and call them. And I actually, I made the concerted effort to make sure that I was connecting with my friends. Um, that I was getting out there because there's just something inside of me that said, I can't do this alone. Um, I couldn't help Don go through it. He went through alone. So I knew that for grief, for me, I couldn't do it alone either. But I would, I don't know if I'm unique in that respect or I'm just very in tune with myself, but I also have a therapist that I went to talk to. Um, I've, I've, you know, I'm just very blunt and very bold about what it is that I'm feeling. And I kind of choose my people to unload on. Right. So, yeah, take it for what it's worth. You got to follow what your inner voice says, and you got to get up off the couch at some point. You got to move you at some point. Did you have friends leave, leave you? Did you have friendships end just because? Uh, I, I don't know. I had friendships involved. You know, I actually found more friends than I thought I had, to be honest. I honestly thought I was going to pack up and move back to Indiana. Um, but what ended up happening is I found more friends than I ever did because I reached out to people, because I said, this is how I need help. I need meals. I need somebody here to hang out with Don, or I need X, Y, and Z. So I was very direct about what I needed, and my friends were very awesome in stepping up. My family, exact the same way. Um, it was just it was just amazing, the kinds of outpouring of support that I had. It was almost overwhelming in trying to manage it all, So, which is a good thing to have. Now, with the, um, you know, getting back to the I'm sorry, because we have a question in the, in the chat room. It's going to be the most question sure. we can say, because we're going to have to close up. Um, sure. What does one want to hear? What did you, what would you have rather heard than everybody coming up saying, I'm so sorry? This sucks? Yeah, I love you. This sucks. Can I hug you? Okay. In whatever order you want to put it in. But, yeah, that's pretty much what it, what it was, is, is I love you. I know this is hard. I can't possibly understand what you're going through, but I'm here. And can I hug you? Because I'm a hugger. And I'm going to bite those words later at the next festival I go to. I just know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, well, just, just, if anything, just get more information. Let them dump. Let the person dump and just say, this is what's going on. And if they don't want to dump, just be with them. And, and just come right out and ask what do you need what do you need exactly what do you need do you need something can i help in any way and maybe it's a two choice thing maybe it's not a tell me tell me what you want me to do it's the can i bring you whiskey can i bring you dinner those are really good offers those those are two things that i really liked hearing for people is you know can i bring you this or can i do this and that gave me a choice and it, it also helped me know what they were willing to do so that helped out a lot. Final words before we go and let everybody know how they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I'm Holly Allender Craig. You can also find me at hackwriter, H-A-K-Writer.com. Um, otherwise, yeah, Facebook's the best thing to do. And, and Misha, thank you so much for honoring Don this way. It's been a privilege to be able to talk to, to more people than I have in the past in this manner. And it's just, I'm humbled. I, I'm straight up, I'm humbled. I'm humbled that I was able to have you on, and I know that Don himself arranged it, because as I said last week, yes. I didn't even him and Hall wondering, well, maybe it's too soon. Maybe I should wait till the summer. Maybe I should wait till <laughs> I just, when he passed, I'm like, okay. And then it was a couple days later, I'm like, I never had him on, and what a wonderful show that would be. People would want to hear from you. When the time's right, I knew I would know, and it was a Saturday, and I just said, now's the time, and I was like, okay, and I didn't even, you know, edit the email I sent to you or anything. Right. You were going through the things in the office and went upstairs, being mad that, you know, you wanted to do things like this, and 
you know, no starting place. And then there was my email. So I know it was, it was a blessing. Yeah. It's been a blessing to, to do this and to communicate with people. And you know, the conversation can keep going. People can contact me directly about their questions, what, what they're, you know, let me know what's going on. I'm not a counselor, but I can tell you based on my experience, what I've done. And if you're finding you're getting a lot of questions as well, we wanted to see what was going to come of this. No problem having you on once a month, once every couple months or so to discuss questions for Absolutely. everybody. And on that note, it is we set Donald, Michael Craig, you have blessed a whole lot of people. You were a fabulous person. I was privileged to have him on my radio show, and may you rest in peace. You will be missed by so many. Good night, everyone. was he did not put on airs um he was a wonderful caring human being missed by a whole lot of people he had graduated from ucla with a degree of philosophy and he studied public speaking and music at the university level and after a decade of personal study and practice he started 10 years of teaching courses in Southern California on the Kabbalah, Tarot, Magic, Tantra, and Psychic Development. And he's the author of many books and publications, and we had a little teaser last week. Uh, Holly informed us that there's some unpublished things that are um, laying around in his office that she's working on making sure that they you get released so you'll have that to look forward to and holly allender craig was married to donald for two years they were together i believe 14 or so ten, 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 yeah, ten years okay um she's a lecturer a cultist a yoga instructor certified massage therapist practitioner psychic and reiki practitioner and she's going to be publishing a whole bunch of books as well. And she'll uh, we'll be seeing about scheduling her as her releases and things are due so that you can get, you know, sneak peeks maybe before it, the stuff gets released and get a better update as to how things are going. With that, because I know we're going to have another, you know, show a little bit. And I'm going to also give you the opportunity this evening to call in yourselves and personally speak directly to Holly, even if you just want to give her your condolences, say hello, you will be able to do so. I'm going to go over the three little, the, the, the rules that we have for calling in now. And right before we open up the phone lines, I will do it again for those joining in a little late. I will need you to be away from the computer or just turn the volume down. Otherwise, we're just going to get the feedback. We also do not have hold 
capabilities. So as we are on the line with someone speaking to them, I need to ask you to please wait until that call is finished before calling in and trying to get through next uh, because we can't put you, put you on hold. The number will get put up and announced. Uh, we're going to try to do that up to give enough people opportunity to phone in about quarter after nine or so. Um, and I do have to ask you to keep it short. I'm going to be like monitoring the time a little bit, especially if we notice that a whole lot of people are wanting to call in. Uh, so we can get as many of you through as we can tonight. With that, for those that may have missed the show completely last week and are not familiar with who Holly is or the name Donald Michael Craig and the wonderful person that he was, um, he was a, a treasure. He was um, what you saw out in public and on interviews where the time's just going to whiz by and a whole lot of you is going to phone in. I want to welcome Holly. Hi. Hi, Ivy Show. Thank you for having me again. I'm really, really glad to be here. I, I'm so thrilled we were able to arrange it with everything you have going on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, let's play catch up just a little bit. We don't want to, you know, rehash everything from, from the last show. Um, but Dunn had been diagnosed. When he was diagnosed, he was already at stage four, correct? Correct. correct. Yeah, so. it had metastasized already to the liver, so we were fighting a really big uphill battle. And you were the one that ended up breaking the news to him. Both Absolutely. Like the doctors would sit both of these down to inform you. Well, one of the, doc the doctor that was, his oncologist said to me that she's seen it in, in her many years in, in the biz that People who heard it from their loved ones actually lived longer than the ones who heard it from their doctors. And Don did live two weeks longer than what they had given as a prognosis. Right, right. And you had a lot of people sending out healing and yes. spiritual work and Reiki being sent and all kinds of things going on. Absolutely. The world was trying to heal Don and it was, we were both so humbled, so inspired. It brought us to tears many times. And for those of you who know Don, he didn't cry very often. So it was, it was a rare moment. Yeah. And um, we'll jump ahead to um, March 17th when he passed. We didn't really touch too much on that day because we were touching on uh, so many other things. He was at home, I believe you had said. Yes, like yeah, yeah. We were able to do hospice at home, and my amazing stepmother, Deb, came out and stayed with me for a month. Uh, she's also a home health care worker and has, you know, worked in these situations before. So that that alone was invaluable. But just just to have someone here with me was amazing. Um, so he's with us for a month. Uh, Time deteriorated, uh, you know, medications were increased because he was in pain. He was, you know, severely stressed out. Um, and March 17th, I had run out to get uh, dinner for Deb and I because it was her anniversary with my father. It was their wedding anniversary. And uh, ran out, got dinner. Don's breathing had slowed a bit. Get back, we have dinner. His breathing slowing a bit more. Um, couldn't get really a good pulse on him. So we know something's happening, but we're not quite sure what. And um, I, I can't just sit still anymore. I can't, I, can't, I can't drink anymore. I can't do anything else. I'm like, I gotta do something. So we do the natural thing that most Hoosiers do. We play cards. So Deb caught, taught me a new card game. And as I was catching on to it, um, I, I, I burst out laughing because I think I won a hand and uh, that's when Don took his last breath, because he heard me laughing. And uh, ran over, put my hand on his chest, and within moments, he just slipped away in his sleep. It was, it was really beautiful. 
that sudden, just like yeah. that, and peaceful. Very, very peaceful. He didn't suffer at all. Hi, everybody. Welcome to What's in the Cards. Uh, nice to see all you here. Um, new faces. Uh, some new faces from last week. Uh, as you are probably aware, I'm doing a two-week special, and this is the conclusion. This is the second week. Our first week was last Wednesday. If any of you missed it or missed part of last week's show and need to catch up, do so in the archives. You can find the link on uh, the Facebook pages for Terror by Misha. It's in the cards. And Holly Craig's page as well has it. Um, as you are aware by now, uh, Donald Michael Craig passed away uh, back on March 17th uh, from pancreatic cancer. We were discussing Holly and his relationship, how they met, um, some private moments that they've had. Uh, Holly was nice enough to give us a peek into the, her life together with Don and uh, all the events leading up to his passing, including finding out the diagnosis and Holly actually having to be the one to break the news to him um, and what they went through and right up to the passing. So tonight we're going to wrap things up, touch on some of the areas that we touched on last week that may have gotten cut off 